Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Good morning once again. It's about isa. And we're here now po mga kapatid. And tayo po ay adidakos Panginoon sa panalangin. Hingi tayo ng wisdom Panginoon. Sensya na pang kapatid. Dalawang bahay dito na may ginagawa sa amin. Pero isa na ay malinaw pa rin ang aking boses. Okay? Now let's pray. Thank you, Panginoon, sa inyong goodness sa amin. Salamat sa pagkakataon muli na kami po ay makapag-aral sa inyong salita. And bless you po, Lord, ang aming umaga. Despite, Panginoon, sa mga noise at uh, mga distractions na aming napakinggan. Ngayon, ikaw po patuloy mag-bless po sa amin. Tumulong sa aming ngayong araw na ito. Magbigay ka ng uh, clarity, Lord, sa aming mga matutunan ngayong umaga. Salamat, Panginoon, sa inyo pong Uh, mga tao na kasama po namin ngayon dito sa online, sa Zoom at dito ganoon din Panginoon dito sa ating, sa Facebook Live. Lord, ikaw patuloy ang magnify sana sa aming mga, mga matutunan. Ito ang patuloy na mag-glorify and ang Panginoong Jesus ang mabigyan ng preeminence. Lord, we acknowledge our frailties, our limitations. So please, Lord, help us. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. So, again, good morning once again sa mga kapatiran na kasama po natin ngayong umaga. And thank you for your presence and, and, and everyone po mga kapatid na nandito. Amen. So, uh, purihin po ang Panginoon sa kanya pong mga ginagawa sa ating buhay. Amen. And um, good morning din Sister Leticia. Amen. And uh, meron na tayong... Sampo and it's it's time to start po mga kapatid and ang, ang atin pong discussion ngayon sa principles of Bible interpretation is nasa principle number 8 na po tayo. We will be looking on the uh, principle of textual construction. Okay, that will be the, the principle of textual construction. Yun po yung ating i-discuss ngayong umaga po mga kapatid. Another important principle na atin pong na-discuss, okay, na may kailangang i-discuss. Last time po mga kapatid, we talk about the principle of literary, uh, literary structure. And ngayon, and, and dami po natin natutunan. I hope may natutunan kayo sa literary structure. I hope na enjoy ninyo ang literary structure ng, ng ating Bible, ng King James Bible. That's principle number Seven. So so far, we talk about the principles of uh, of uh, scriptural defining. We talk about the principle number two, the principle of analytical defining. Principle number three, we talk about the principle of uh, complete defining. Principle number four is principle um, of uh, single sense. Okay. And uh, the principles of the principle of figurative language, yun yung pang lima at yung pang anim. Ano ba yung sunod nun? Principles of figurative language. Ano bang na ulang natin po mga kapatid na? And the principle of word order. The principle of word order. Okay. Then last week, the principle of literary structure. Ngayon po mga kapatid, we'll be dealing on the principle of textual construction. So this would serve the law of text. So pag sinabi mong textual construction is we are now focusing our attention dito po sa ano po mga kapatid? Dito po sa um, sa mismong yung verse or sa text or sentence sa sentence construction ng ng verse or ng salita ng Diyos. Okay? So, and um, uh, this is very important na enjoy, uh, ma malaman natin and this would also add to our appreciation sa salita ng Diyos. So, medyo technical tayo a little bit but we will, I'll tell you later on the importance of this uh, topic at uh, makita po natin and, uh, and also ma-appreciate nyo that Uh, ma-appreciate nyo na kung bakit meron kang King James Bible. Appreciate mo kung bakit may King James Bible ka at binigyan tayo ng Panginoon ng King James Bible 
And uh, itong importance na ito, as we know, the textual principle of textual construction. So si Sir Walter Scott one time, sabi niya, let me quote, Within this awful volume lies the mystery of mysteries, happiest day of human race to whom their God has given grace. Amen. To read, to fear, to hope, to pray, and to lift the latch and force their way. And better had they never been born who read to doubt or read to scorn. Mga kapatid, we're not doing this, we're not studying to doubt. We're not studying to scorn. But we are to read, amen, to enjoy, amen, to wonder, amen, and to fear, amen. And uh, dahil nabigyan po tayo ng pagkakataon ng Panginoon. And uh, God gave us His book. And we are not read to doubt. We are not, uh, we are not those who read, amen, to doubt or who read to, to correct or to scorn the word of God. But we are we're here or we are the one to read. Who we are the one, okay? Who read, mga kapatid, to believe and to have conviction. Amen. Sa mga salitaan with appreciation. Sa kanyang salita. Now, let's look at the necessity of this principle. Ano ba tong principle na ito? At ano bang necessity nito? In which I'll We'll tell about more of that later on. So when we talk about set, uh, the textual construction, we are talking about the syn syntactical okay, construction. So sa linguistic, mga kapatid, meron po tayong mga, meron po tayong mga important na mga terms na ma maintindihan sa components of grammar. Like sa linguistic, like, You have you need to understand. Ito yung ano yung mga components like morphology. Morphology yung phonology or phonological morphology phonology, then semantics at sa kasintaktik. Si tung apat na ito ay napaka important. Okay, so itong 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 pinag-usapan natin ngayon. Let's talk about syntactics on the area of syntactics. Ano ba? Ano ba? By the way, isa-isahin natin. Isulat ko po mga kapatid para makita lang po ninyo. These are, don't be afraid with terms, but this, they're, they're easy. But these are used by linguists. Uh, ito po ang kanilang mga terminologies na ginagamit. Now, number one, ito yung mga components no, ng lingui uh, linguistics. Number one, we have morphology. Then we have also phonology. We have also here number three, syntactics. Okay, unay mo na natin yung isa semantics. And number four, we have the syntactics. Okay. Okay, so that's very important, syntactics. Okay, now, itong area na pag-uusapan po natin falls dito po sa syntactics. Okay, that falls here. Now, morphology is, these are a study on how words are formed. So, when you talk about morphology, you're talking about how words are formed, the formation of words. Remember, words are, are ano po mga kabated, ay not just ano po mga kabated na It's just made up of letters, but there are also studies on when you words can be also be compounded, could be joined together. So, so morphology. There are words, there are root words, and there are words added to the word, like the basic word of faith. The word, the basic word is faith, and when you add a prefix, okay, and a suffix, a word before and a word after, and tawag bujan are affixes. So it is now part of the study of morphology. So it 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 observes the changes and the behavior of the word. So so pag sinabi mo morphos, okay, it is form, okay. It means pag sinabi mo ah ah 
morphology is a formation. It's a form. Pag sinabi mong metamorphosis, it is change in form. So when you see this word, don't be afraid. But that's just the formation of words or how words are formed. When you talk about phonology, just think of telephone. Okay, microphone. So phono means sounds. So phonology is how words are sounded. Okay, may ganon. That's a study. So ng pronunciation, lahat ng iyon. No? So, so while morphology are how words are formed and phonologies are how words are sounded, while se semantics are how words are defined. Okay, ito naman. Semantics. So mga definitions. We're talking about definition. How words are defined. So these are basics sa linguistics po mga kabatid, but itong pinag-usapan natin, syntactics, these are now a study on how words are related to other words. How words are related to other words, mga kabatid. So don't worry, we don't go to Greek and Hebrew. We are just to study our English Bible in an English language by the grace of God po mga kabatid. How words are related to other words. So ibig sabihin, these are the grammatical sense. So when we talk about in interpretation, these are the grammatical sense of the reading. Okay, so it talks about grammar on how words relate to other words, po, mga kapatid. So just, just take note on that. Now, going back po mga kapatid, so gusto kong i-point out. So this principle that we are studying is, is this is now what we call the syntactical, syntactical construction. Okay of the text to determine the grammatical sense of the reading. To determine the grammatical okay, sense of the reading. And uh, missing its purpose, so talking about this principle of textual construction, so we're just looking at the how, uh, simply put, okay, simply put, para hindi po tayo mag, magiging, mag sound po na ano po, simply put, we are just trying to look at the grammar of our King James Bible. And knowing the grammar of our King James Bible is the key. Mga kabatid, susi din po ito for an, an easy or for a, ano po, uh, for understanding. And uh, pag once na makuha mo yun, ma, ma, hindi, hindi ka na ma, malito and it would help not only understanding, but it provides precision, provides ng clarity ng, ng salita ng Diyos. So it's very important kasi pag, pag hindi ka lang basta-basta mag-interpret and we don't use, we don't rely the Greek and Hebrew or dictionaries in, in King James Bible interpretation, we just rely on the words, we just rely on the text, we just, we just rely on what was written. And this is very important to note, mga kabatid. Okay, so missing these things, kasi remember sa ating law of text po mga kapatid, that Jesus Christ proved, remember, Jesus Christ used grammar to prove a point. He used grammar and many, many things to prove a point. And in the Bible po mga kapatid, even the, the two word preposition, okay, two words preposition po mga kapatid, could mean a thing. Even those mga prepositional words or phrases could mean a, a thing. The, the in and the on is very different. Just one letter ang kaiban, in and on. Malaki na ang difference. Pag sinabi mong seed, the seeds, it, it, it changes interpretation and it could not just be taken lightly. Because that's how important, mga kabatid. So missing its purpose will lead to serious error to interpretation. And we are Bible literalists. And part of the literal interpretation is the grammatical interpretation. It is to observe closely the grammatical reading or the sense of the reading, po, mga kabatid. And uh, that's why we, we included this as part ng atin pong, ano po, mga kabatid, subject matter dito sa principles of Bible interpretation. And uh, because grammar is the study of characteristics of language. Amen. It, it's a study of a characteristics of a language. 
She will know the characteristics of the language by its grammar, although grammar does not form the foundation of language. We acknowledge that. We know that po mga kapatid. But grammar defines language. And even sa Tagalog, may grammar sa Pilipino, may grammar. I have a son here. Nagsasalita siya palagi. He's tried to speak in Tagalog but palaging wrong grammar. Parang yung tatay niya pag mag-English, palaging wrong grammar. Mahirap pag magsalita, madaling magsulat. Pero pag magsalita ka because man, minsan yung he, yung lalaki, supposedly he, sometimes machine natin, you know, hindi palaging alert. Or sometimes supposedly you said it in in a singular form, masabi mo sa plural form. Pag writing, madali mo, makita mo kaagad. Not only pag magta-type ka sa sa Microsoft Word, may mga auto-correct na or may mga guide na sa sentence construction and grammar. Pero yung magsulat ka lang, makikita mo na agad. Pag i-read mo ulit, oy, supposedly singular ito, ito plural, supposedly past tense to ito, present tense, bakit mo ginawang ganito, ganyan. Amen. So it's very important, lalo na vital part in interpretation kasi ito pong literal interpretation ay nakasalalay not only sa historical reading but also sa grammatical reading. Okay, so as such, we're not talking about also American grammar. We're not talking about American English. We're not talking about modern English grammar of today. When we talk about the, the textual construction, we're not talking about that. But we're talking about the very grammar of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is the author of this book. And we acknowledge that. It is the very grammar of the Holy Ghost himself in the language of our beloved King James Bible. I have a, a lengthy study on this, on the subject, on the language of the King James Bible. So, uh, of course, that would be, siguro, sa mga susunod na time po mga kapatid, we'll be talking about that. The language of the King James Bible. So, but as of now po mga kapatid, let's Understand this closely. Ito pong, ito pong pag-aaralan po natin. Now, behind me po mga kapatid is the outline structure of English language. Behind me is the outline structure of the English language. I don't know if you could, if you could see that po mga kapatid sa inyo pong, sa inyo pong uh, uh, tawag nito sa inyo pong mga screen. But the, this one is what we call the structure Okay, of the English language. The outline structure of the English language. Now, in college, po, mga kapatid, we studied a little on, on linguistics. But, um, of course, when I learned these things, what runs in my mind is the King James Bible. Right after the King James Bible. The wonder of the King James Bible, and these are all very true and applied po sa atin, po, mga kapatid. Now, what you see here is these are the construction, okay, or the, the outline structure of the English language. Sentences are analyzed into clauses. You know, sentences, we don't have to define what is a sentence and what is a clause. So, but sentences are analyzed into clauses. So, how do you analyze a sentence? You look at the clauses. The first clause would be the subject and the predicate. Usually the subject and the predicate. Okay, which is the the subject. Amen. Then usually the predicate bears the yung karugtong. So two, i, sino ba subject? Nalais mo, tinitingnan mo yung clauses. Tinitingnan mo yung dalawang clauses. And sentences usually, basic sentence have two clauses. Okay, because a clause cannot stand alone. It cannot be a sentence. So, makikita po natin. So, sentences are analyzed into clauses. Now, to analyze clauses, but clauses are analyzed into phrases. So, you look at the phrases within the clause. And phrases are analyzed into words. So, within that phrases, a phrase could be, okay, a phrase could be a two or three, okay, words. Combined po mga kapatid, or in that one phrase. So you have to analyze each one of them. Is are they in, in this clause are they 
o oh, itong itong pre prepositional uh, phrases na ito ay ito ba ay uh, uh, ano ba ang behavior niya is this in the past or is this in for the future is this towards to this person sino ang object nito so phrases are analyzed in the words so titingnan mo yung mga maliliit na salita and words are analyzed into morphemes that's why nandito na pag-aralan natin yung morphology how words are formed so paano mo i-analyze yung ano is this a compound word o ano ang root word nito you are now studying morphology so one word an example example yung word is unfaithful if the word is unfaithful So by sometimes ito po just like the word inspiration improving inspiration po mga kapatid remember improving inspiration that is one word anong ginagamit mo morphology to analyze how will you analyze so words are analyzed into morphemes so you will look at morphemes how many more morphemes those are the basic word the root word the morpheme So this is composed of oh, the word is there is a word an added and the word full, and the basic word is faith. So you are analyzing, but you are just looking at one word. So this is a compound word an faithful. Now this is one word inspiration. You are analyzing now of inspiration by by looking at the morpheme. And you could see affixes. So there is an affix in, which means inside. And you have the affix asian, okay, which is the act of being. You analyze that. But you have spear or spear, inspiration or spear. Dito, it was asian. So which is, pag sa morphology kasi, not all na maritain yung root word, but there will be some changes, madrop, Of spelling, but you understand the root word. Ah, this is spirit. So when you analyze one word, ah, this is in spirit action or action, the act of. So it put this together. Inspiration is the act of being in the spirit or the action of the spirit in. So, do you get the point? When you talk about incarnation, so looking at one word, and bago po bago po tayo tatakbo sa dictionary, sa naya natin sa sarili natin na titingin mo na tayo sa word. Practice natin yung words are analyzed into morphemes. Amen. Analyze mo. Oh, incarnation. So in, it's of course means inside the prefix, the suffix. Asian is the act of so carne. So that is a derived word from, from ano, from Latin carne, of course, which means flesh. Amen. Kaya ang carne sa atin is yung, of course, yung laman, flesh. And um, incarnation, so the act of being in the flesh. So yun lang po po mga kapatid na makita po natin. So now moving forward. Not only words are analyzed into morphemes. Anong ginagawa natin? Ginawa natin yung literary structure, di ba? Look at, anong tawag dito natutunan natin? Is this introversion? Or, or yung isa po mga kapatid ay uh, yung, pati ako nakalimut ako sa ginagamit kong term. Introversion or ano po mga kapatid? Um, yung alternation. O, yun, yun, alternation. So of course this is introversion. Nauna yung nauna okay, ay yung nahuli siya nang maging mauna. So nag introvert or invert inverted siya. So this is an introversion construction. Na makikita po natin po mga kapatid. So with that regard okay, morphemes are used to build so ito yung morphemes. Morphemes are used to build words. That's why ito ay mga morphemes used to build words. You have combining morphemes, you have words, and we call it morphology. Okay? And words are used to build phrases. 
and phrases are used to build clauses. And clauses are used to build sentences. And sentences are used to build paragraph. If you move on, Pam. And a paragraph, paragraphs are used to build discourse. Okay? Or a book or whatever. Or speech. So, yun po, mga kapatid. So, na dapat natin maintindihan. So, you basic. So, when you study, when you study this syntactics, ano po, mga kapatid, or yung, yung, yung textual construction, it is also important on how sentences are analyzed. It is also important if sentences are analyzed by clauses. You, it is so, so important how clauses are analyzed. If it's analyzed by phrases, and it is also important to look at how phrases are analyzed. And if they're analyzed into words, it's so important also to look at how words are analyzed. And it's, we know it's analyzed by morphine. And because all of these are used to build words, morph words are used to build phrases, phrases are used to build clauses, clause, and all of that. Hanggang sa dulo. So, that's just very important na pinapakita po natin. And of course, looking on, on basic, but when we talk about grammar, we talk about the part of speech. It's very important yung part of speech. Remember, ang atin pong, ano po mga kapatid, ang atin pong Bible is the communication of God. So, simula pa grade 1 tayo, grade 1, I don't know if you'll remember, I have a, I have a grade schooler here, homeschooler dito sa bahay. And of course, um, they're studying this. Simula nung kinder pa nga hanggang grade 2. So ganun tayo, mga Pilipino din. We studied the parts of speech, yung pinaka-basic po mga kabated. Of course, we know po mga kabated, uh, the parts of speech. Amen. And... Uh, we have, of course, the noun, the adjective. Ano pa? We have the pronoun. We have the verbs, the adverbs. We have the preposition. We have the conjunctions. Okay. If you add, meron pang interjections. If you remember, I don't know, mga kapatid, if you, if you still remember. My kapatid, my purpose kung bakit ka din nakapag-aaral, no? gamitin mo yun para sa pag-aaral mo sa salita ng Diyos. Do not use it to correct the Bible, but use it to appreciate the Bible and to know and to read and learn the Bible. Amen. So, because God gave us, okay, an English Bible, an English book. And mga kapatid, it is, it is worthwhile also to, to study these things. Amen. It's worthwhile to study these things. So, I don't know if article is considered as part of speech. Hindi ko na alam ngayon kung ano ang modern na mga ano po mga kapatid, teachings. Because hindi naman ako nagpa-practice teaching sa secular or, or lahat po na yun. But I dedicated my life, devoted my life by the grace of God in teaching the Bible. And uh, of course, I find this very important, necessary. None of those things that I've learned I've wasted and uh, na-apply most especially pag profitable po ito sa ating Bible study. But never, but never po mga kapatid to criticize the Bible, never to read mga kapatid to, to scorn or to doubt. But it has been helpful sa pag-aaral po natin ng salita ng Diyos. So the parts of speech is very important. So Hindi ka maka-move on na pag-aaral nito kung hindi mo alam or ma hindi mo ma-analyze itong ganito kung hindi mo alam kung ano mga pangalan ng mga ano na yon. So, mayroong kaparte. So, dapat importante alamin mo kung ano ang noun dyan. Okay? Ano ang adjectives ba dyan? Ano ba? Ang, ano ba? Noun bang ginamit o pronoun? O ano bang action na ginagawa? O verb? Or adverb or how was it done kasi kung ang ang verb by action pero ang ang manner on how it was done it's the adverb 
Okay. And of course, uh, any, ano po, a preposition, any words that will stand before a noun. Amen. Or of course, alamin mo, anong nagko-connect ng dalawa nito? Of course, you know, it's conjunction. And ano ba ang, ano ba ang emotion ng sentence na ito? Of course, that talks about an interjection. Hindi ko alam kung kasama ba ang interjection, not sure. Or yung article. Pag sinabi mong, when you talk about yung three little words, when you see three little words, we often see an article. Yung a or yung and or the. Usually, yung ana and an or the. Uh, they're called article or nouns are the name of anything. So, when you teach children about this, it's just very simple, no? Any name. Of course, hindi naman tayo mag, maglalagay pa ng mga common noun or proper noun. But basta the name of anything, whether a school or a garden or a hoop or string, it's a noun. Or adjectives tells the kind of noun. Amen. Kung anong klase na it describes the noun, it modifies the noun, it tells the kind of noun as gr great ba, small, pretty ba, or white, brown. Amen. And instead of nouns or in, pang malit sa noun or pang replace sa noun para hindi naman pa ulit-ulit, alam nyo yung alam mo yung pag uh, pagbata, yung childish speech, paulit-ulit palagi. Uh, sometimes, gamitin niya ang kanyang pangalan instead of gagamit siya ng I. Gamit siya. Example, si Manu nag-eat ng chocolate. Si Manu nag-play. Si Manu nag... So, sanay sila po na ginagamit ang kanilang pangalan. Si Manu nag-cry kanina. Pero he's talking to himself. Si Manu ay nag... So, of course... Para hindi naman redundant po mga kapatid na paulit-ulit, nakakasawa naman din minsan yung paulit-ulit ng pangalan. So, may pahinga naman. Sometimes, gumagamit tayo ng pang-replacement and we call it, of course, the pronouns. And very important, napaka-importante yan sa textual construction. Lalo na, o oh, sino tong he na ito? Dapat alamin mo. Sino ba tong kahapon? We, we talk about that, no? A little bit. O oh, sino yung he? For example, sabi ng Bible, to feed the church of God, which He purchased with His own blood. So I, I told them, who is that He referring that purchased with His own blood? So ano yung nearest point of refer reference, a context? And they said, it's God. So He purchased with His own blood. So who? It is God. So ibig sabihin, it's God's own blood. So we you analyze the pronoun by losing also. So very important. Kasi sometimes pag nakita mo ng he, sino kaya to? Walang pangalan eh. So hindi po definite. Not the, then the count the context will provide you okay, the information kung sino. It is important like for example, uh 1 John 3:16, whereby perceive he the love of God when he Lay down his life for us. So, sino yung he? It's God. Kasi ang nearest na niyang na subject, sabihin, perceive we the love of God when he laid down his life for us. So, who laid down his life for us? It's God. And who is that? Jesus Christ. So, ibig sabihin, Jesus Christ is God. Ganun lang. It, it proves also doctrines. Eh, hindi mo basta-basta ang that little pronoun should should be ano po mga kapatid should be uh, underestimated at mamaya observe ra natin yung mga pronouns yung mga the ng mga you mga thou sa King James Bible ay atin yung pag-aaralan kasi importante yun kasi para malaman mo kung sinong nagsasalita sinong kinausap importante po yung i-locate kasi pag hindi ka ma, hindi mo alam yun po mga kapatid ah, magmalilito okay alam po natin yun Okay, so 
instead of nouns, the pronouns stand. Amen. Amen. You could, instead of using the, the name redundantly, you could say his head or his face. Or you could say his arm. Or you could say your arm or your hand. Amen. Sometimes hindi kasi, hindi kasi proper sabihin na, sabihin mo, i-address mo ang kanyang pangalan. And, um, at hindi ka gagamit ng pronoun. Okay? Kausap mo. Kausap mo ang isang tao. Okay? Example, Brother Joma, nandyan ka lang sa tabi ko or sa harapan ko, sabi ko, but Joma's hand has dirt or Joma's, Joma's hand is dirty. Gagamitin ko pa ngayon, diretso. Tapos ikaw, kausap ko. Joma's hand is dirty. May parang kang bata, no? Ganun ang bata, di ba? Pag-uulit. Pero, of course, ang formal, sabihin mo lang, your hand is dirty. So, of course, you may, you may think this fully po, mga kapatid, but you will realize later on how important is this pagdating po sa, pagdating po sa ating King James Bible. Kasi, word for word, eh, very important, importante sa atin yon sa interpretation. Kasi literal, Bible literalist nga tayo. So, of course, the verbs, okay, tell of something being done. Amen. And, you know, the action, the word, okay, to read or to write, to count, to sing, or jump, or run. And how things are done, how the work is performed, we call it adverbs. Whether it is slowly, whether it is quickly, whether it is well done, whether it is Okay. Um, you could you could continue, amen. So of course, a proposition stands before a noun, as in or through or by or at, on, and all of that. So, and of course, conjunction, it connects the noun together, amen. And interjection. So the whole are called the. All of that are called the uh, okay parts of speech. Sabi nila there are seven parts of speech, but sabi nila there are nine parts of speech, including the article and the interjection. Seven lang yung iba. It's just noun all the way to conjunction. We have the noun according to many many ano na po studies ngayon. Noun, adjectives, pronouns, verbs, adverbs, then preposition. Okay. Ang iba ay conjunction. Okay? And, yan. Pito. Pero pag dadagdagan mo ng article, pag dadagdagan mo ng interjection that you'd make as noun po, mga kapatid. Amen. So, all of that are part of speech and which reading and writing and speaking, mga kapatid. I, these are things, these things are vitally important. Now, Let's go now to our Bible. Now, I, I intended to ano po mga kabatid, to show this sa inyo. Ito po yun, very unique po ang King James. And siguro I will share my screen. Isi-share ko na lang para makita nyo kasi hindi ko may ano sa board do. Kapo ha, hanapin ko muna yung kung saan na ako sa dito. I will share my screen to you. And para po ma makita po natin. Uh, ito po yung ano ng ating uh, King James Bible grammar. Okay, dito. Yan. Hindi ko alam kung nakikita nyo po mga kapatid. What you see there sa, sa taas po mga kapatid. Okay. Is yung verbs and pronouns. Usage in the authorized version. So wait. Sana ba? Escape ko muna ha. Stop ko muna. Kasi hindi ko makita ng buo. Ba't ganun? Yun. Ulit. Uulitin ko pa nga kapatid. Hindi na ako sanay mag-share screen ha. Ah. 
Okay. Yan. So, I'd like you to observe, I made this table para makita po natin. Uh, this is the number of person sa first column. Then, um, ito yung mga types ng pronoun. Okay. And nominative pronoun or the objective pronoun. Okay, ganun din ang reflexive, possessive, adjective ginagamit dito and also possessive pronoun. Makikita po natin. Now, this part, ito pong ano po, uh, row, first person singular, we have the I. Okay? The me, first person singular, ha? myself, my, and mine. Okay, we know that. It's observe po mga kapatid, wala masyadong ka kaibahan yan sa modern English. Now, next is the first person plural. We, us, ourselves, are, ours. Our, then ours. So, ikita po natin. And dito, sa second person singular, we have the thou. Now, ito na. This is now the unique ng, uh, uniqueness ng King James Bible. You have now the thou. That's the second person. Okay, the the, okay, thyself, then thine, or thy, yung isa, thine. So this is the, lahat ng ti, thou, the, thyself, thy, thine. These are second person, okay, singular. Nakita nyo po. Pero sa modern English, ang nominative niya is you, Okay? Ang objective niya, you pa rin. Andito, yourself. Okay? Dito sa kanya ay your and dito ay yours. So, lahat you ang paggagamit. Pero sa King James Bible, even plural or singular, you pa rin. Kuha po natin. So pag dito sa second person, plural, sa King James, ye. Okay. Second person, ye, men of Israel. Hindi mo nang pwedeng sabihin, you. Okay. Israel. But ye. Men of Israel. So, gagamit siya ng so, nominative, yung pinakauna po. Gagamit siya yung ye. Tapos yung objective, pwede niya yung you. Pero ang you sa King James Bible is always used as plural. Never used doon sa singular. Okay? Dapat nating uh, maintindihan niya, no? Pero sa modern English, Ginagamit po itong parehas lang. Kaya malilito ka whether whether plural ba ang subject o singular. So magbabackread ka, tingnan mo, maigi. At magkikita mo yan sa Bible, malilito ka po mga kapatid. Papakita po natin yan, Lord willing po mga kapatid, this morning, kung paano po. And next, the second person plural, yourselves. The King James, your and yours. Pero dito po sa modern version, apply din to your at saka yours and yourself, yourself, apply po ito sa singular din, sa isang tao. Pwede din i-apply sa isang tao. Singular person. Pero sa, yun ang problema sa modern version. Malilito ka later on kung sinong tinutukoy. Kaya walang precision, walang clarity kung sino ba ang kausap, ano bang, uh, sino ba ang kinakausap, sino ba ang nagsasalita. At pan, para kanino kasi, very important kasi ang pronoun po mga kapatid, very important kasi it substitutes the noun. Kung mawala ka doon, 
Ako po. So, the third person, okay, singular, of course, sa King James, he, or she, or it. Or, pag, of course, pag, sa objective pronoun, him, or her, or it. Himself, herself, itself, his, her, its. Okay, lahat po yun, po mga kapatid. So, the, the third person, plural, the they, them, themselves, their, then theirs. Okay. Now, just take note on that. And how, mga kapatid, sabihin mo, mm, ayaw namin ng, sabi ng modern version, ayaw namin ng King James kasi maraming mga these at mga thou's. I don't like that nasty these and thou's. At basta sa King James Bible, tandaan mo lang po, mga kapatid, lahat na nagsimula ng T, Okay, lahat ng nagsimula ng T, saan ba natin? Ito, lahat ng nagsisimula ng T ay singular. At lahat ng nagsimula ng Y ay plural. Okay, yun lang. Yun lang ang tandaan mo. And uh, now, ano relevance nito? So our next, ano po mga kabatid? Next part, we will go to the application on how important grammar and especially in this part ng ating pinag-usapan po mga kabatid. Okay. Now, here are a few examples po mga kabatid. The importance of, uh, of the grammar in the King James Bible. The importance of grammar in the King James Bible. Bible po mga kapatid. Okay. Ito na yung application doon sa chart na binigay ko sa inyo. And uh, kung hindi tayo mag-observe po mga kapatid, ay magkaroon tayo ng problema. I'm doing this mga kapatid to illustrate the importance of grammar. So that's why I'm giving you few examples. But there are many, many. All, you could get example from Genesis to Revelation. To just my, I'm just trying to prove a point that you could not just say, I hate the these and the thou's and the ano. Hindi po siya burden. But rather, sanay ka lang sa modern grammar. But rather, it would help you. Ito po ay blessing at beneficial and part po na ma-appreciate mo yung precision, clarity ng ating King James Bible na hindi ka talaga magkakamali kung i-observe mo yung, i-observe mo ang kanya pong ano po mga kapatid, ang mga ang kanyang interpretation. Now, I chose na i-flash po yung, yung words or yung verses para makita po natin. Kasi I, would, I will also make some, uh, I, I, I also put little comments sa observation ko to help us out dito po sa, sa aking ipopost na mga verses. Okay. So may, may, medyo technical tayo ng konti but I think uh, you will understand later on the end of this po mga kapatid, why this is very important. Now, first off, let's start with Jeremiah chapter number 5. I'd like you to observe the, the pronouns na ginagamit po dito po mga kapatid. Now, in Jeremiah 5.13 to 14, take note, the prophets, the Bible says, the prophets shall become wind and the word is not in them. Thus, shall it be done unto them. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord of God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and his people would, and it shall devour them. Now, I highlighted yung word na, Wherefore, thus saith the Lord, be, be, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye, which is pagway, plural, speak this word. Behold, I will make my words in thy, singular, mouth, fire. So if you observe closely, if you don't have the King James Bible, what you will have is, because you speak this word, behold, I will make 
my words in your mouth fire. And these people would, and it shall devour them. But how these pronouns in the King James Bible that we should note would help you with your interpretation. God is referring to the false prophet when he says, because ye speak this word. When he used the word ye, he was referring to the false prophets above in verse 13. Amen. But he is talking to Jeremiah. God is talking to Jeremiah, the true prophet, when he says, I will make my words in thy mouth, thy mouth, fire. Now, without this distinction of pronoun, without this precision of the language of the King James Bible, you will never have any idea Who's that you, if it just change it to you, because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words in your mouth fire. So, magiging isa siya. Wa, hindi mo siya ma-separate. Magkakaroon ka ng problema. Na si, si Jeremiah, magiging false prophet, or yung false prophet, magiging si Jeremiah, or marambol-rambol. So, pagdating sa interpretation mo, mali ka na kagad. If you don't have the King James Bible, you will suffer that kind of mistakes. Kita nyo po. Kasi ganun eh, may shift eh. And kung hindi natin yan, di tayo gagamit ng grammar din. Amen. Di natin ma-analyze yung phrases, yung sentences by using these words, looking at these words. Naku po. Have you seen the the the, the ano po the danger? Mga kapatid, magkamali ka. Ma-misconstrued mo na si Jeremiah isa ay yung si Jeremiah ay magiging false prophet dito or ang false prophet maging si Jeremiah. Amen. So you na hindi, ay, hindi ko alam kung nakuha niyo ba ang gusto kong ipaabot mga brethren. Gusto ko ipakita sa inyo. Let me give you another example. Let me give you another example. Acts 13.34 The Bible says, As concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. So I emphasize the word you. I will give you the sure mercies of David. Now, if you will if if you have a modern version, you have no difference between the singular and the plural in pronoun, you will just use you. So you will just naturally interpret it as as concerning that he singular raise him up. So that's talking to Jesus Christ from the dead. Now no more to return to corruption. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. So you will just naturally interpret the word you that pertains to the he. That pertains to the he in the sentence. Because in the modern language, the you is just applied for singular or plural. In form. But in actual interpretation, because you understand the word you, why is plural always in the language of the King James Bible, therefore it must be separate from the he. It must be separate from the he. So Jesus Christ is God. He's the one who gave mercy. Hindi po ito, I will give you the sure mercies of David. He is not the you here. At sino yung you? I will give you the sure mercies of David. Sino? It's not Jesus Christ na sinabihan ng Diyos na bibigyan kita ng sure mercies. And it's not even talking to David. But anong, ano po ang take natin dyan? Neglecting the distinction of the plural you, okay, one would naturally think that God is saying to the risen Christ, 
I will give you the sure mercies of David. But of course, mga kapatid, but he isn't referring to Christ. The text is not referring to Christ, but God is speaking to all of his people, the nation of Israel, by using the word you. And I will give you, that's the nation of Israel, the sure mercies of David. You see, you will be delivered from false, false, and wrong interpretation. And you will rejoice in that fact that having this blessed old book over here, amen, would spare you from any corrupt interpretation. And don't dare, sabi na lang, oh, itong new King James na ito, King James lang ito, Tinaling, tinanggal lang namin mga these and the thou's at binalik namin sa, gumamit kami ng mga grammar na balik kami sa pronoun doon kasi para maintindihan, nako po, hindi po yun nakakatulong in reality. Hindi po yun nakakatulong. That's one good thing you, you would like, you'd like to have. That's why we call this the King James Bible Interpretation. And the Greek word will not help you that. And the Hebrew words will not help you that. And the modern version will not help you that. To give you precision in your interpretation. But only the King James Bible has this preciseness and this exactness, mga kabadid, na makikita po natin na hindi ka magkakamali. Okay? So another example. 2 Chronicles chapter number 17 verses uh, 7 verse 9, 17 to 19. Now, mas nakakalito po ito po mga kabotet. Sinashortcut ko na lang yung verse. No? Pero mas malilito ka dito. Kasi ang dami, rambol-rambol eh. Kang ang gamit mo ay puro na lang sa both sa plural at saka singular, singular. Ang gamit mo ay you pa rin sa modern modern grammar and modern english and ganun din ang gamit ng mga modern versions so ano mayyari let me read second chronicles 7 verses 17 to 19 and as for thee gada and as for thee if thou wilt walk before me so obviously singular and do all that i have this is talking to ano this is talking to solomon where God is talking to Solomon. But look at that. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me and do all that I have commanded thee, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom. But nag-shift. But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandment and shall go on and serve other gods. And you know what happened. I is we continue the sentence. But what I'm trying to emphasize here is the shift of the use of pronoun from singular, from Solomon to ye, to plural. But if ye turn away, now, you will lose that small detail there. Remember, every jot, every title sa ating King James Bible matters. They are very important. That little word ye, amen, would be missed. If you change it with the, the lahat ay you and, and ask for you, if you will walk before me and do all that I have commanded you, so you see, nawala yung mga nominative, nawala yung subjective na, 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 na manner or order kasi parehas nga uniform eh. And ask for you, if, I, if you will walk before me, and do all that I have commanded you, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandment, and serve another God and all of that. So, maparehas, wala nang distinction. Mawala po yun. So, ano magiging impact? Malaki po, mga kabatid. First, God is speaking individually to King Solomon with the T words na aking pinakita, but then he addresses all the people of Israel when he said ye. Because it's not just a commandment to Solomon, but it is also a commandment to all. 
And what happened? That ye, po mga kapatid. That's very, very important po mga kapatid. That may be a small detail, but missing that, misinterpreting that po mga kapatid, is already a form of corruption. And we will be guilty of not being a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah, that's a problem po mga kapatid. And hindi, hindi mo pwedeng palampasin ang mga bagay na yan. Ito pa, another. This is, this is David when he challenged Goliath. And David said in 1 Samuel 17, verse number 45. And David said, Thou comest to me, so singular, Thou comest to me with a sword and a, with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee, another singular, to thee in the name of the Lord. For the battle is the Lord's. And sabi niya, and he will give you into our hands. David said, and he will give you into our hands. So dalawang, dalawang pronoun yet you have to observe. One is singular. The other one is plural. The you. The thou and the thee, singular, pertaining to a single person. The you is pertain, pertaining to at least two or more person. So makikita mo yan. Now, if you have a modern grammar, if you are of a modern Bible, you could not see that distinction. You will think that it's all pertaining to one person. Amen. It's all pertaining to one person. And you will miss the fine details which, mga kapatid, are very significant in understanding. So David was not just telling Goliath that God would deliver him up. But also, he was talking to the, all of the Philistines as well by telling them, and he will give you, including those soldiers who were watching, and the Philistine soldier who were there, he was also giving a message that he will give you all, amen, into our hands. So he was not just challenging Goliath, but he was challenging all of the Philistine soldiers including Goliath, by telling them right before their face, and God will give you into our hands. Woo! If you don't have a King James Bible, mind you, you will miss that. Amen. You will miss the proper understanding and interpretation of the word. Do you understand now why it has to why it's so important to have a perfect Bible in our hand? Because this also affects our interpretation. And every word matters. And it matters to God. It matters to the author who put all those words into his word. Remember, every word has purpose. It is purpose. The author has purpose to every words na nakasulat po sa kanyang salita. And that's very important to take note po mga kapatid. Amen, amen, amen. I hope you see that and observe that thing. Okay, Luke chapter number 22. Let's go to the New Testament books. Luke chapter number 22, verses 31 and 32. This is God talking to Peter. But be careful, look at, Another shifty words dito. Sabi niya, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. Satan hath desired to have you. That he may sift you. Amen. As a wheat. Alam niyo yung magano ka ng, magtanggal ka ng, okay, yung chaff from the wheat. That he may sift you as a wheat. But I have prayed for thee, singular, that thy, singular, faith fail not. And when thou, singular, okay, art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now, take note, ah, careful. Ah. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, plural. Simon, Simon. It seems he's talking to Peter, but Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. 
But sabi niya, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So, you know that the Lord Jesus Christ is not just talking to Peter. And Peter is not just alone. He's not just the only audience. And Peter was with the disciples at that time. And Jesus Christ was communicating to them. But if you don't have the King James Bible, you will miss that fine details, that fine significant details in your interpretation. So the word you is plural, meaning Satan wished to sift all of the disciples. By the way, not just them, but including us. Di lang naman ang desire ng jablo sila, including all the believers. Amen. And by using the word you, amen. And that means you all. Amen. But Jesus is letting Peter know, ay kita po natin, that he had prayed for him. He had prayed for thee, singular, specifically as an individual. So, mga kapatid, I don't know kung big deal ba sa inyo yan, pero napaka-importante po yan po, mga kapatid, na makita po natin. Dito, Genesis chapter number 18. Ito, alam po natin to. Sabi ng, sabi ng uh, ito po, 18 verses 1 to 4. This is yung si Lot na nakaupo siya sa may gate ng Sodom and may lumapit sa kanyang mga anghel. And sabi niya, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. Sabi niya, I pray thee from thy servant, let a little water Okay, I I mean I'm not talking about Lot, but I'm talking about Abraham. Sabi niya, that little water. Sabi niya dito, let a little water. I pray you, plural, be fetched and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. He's talking to that, to that angel, and I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that, ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. So take note, ah. So my Lord, if now I have found in thy sight, singular, pass not away, I pray thee, singular, from thy servant, singular, and let a little water, I pray you, plural, be fetched and wash your, plural, feet, And rest yourselves, plural. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts, plural. After that ye shall pass on, therefore are ye come to your servant. Now, if you lose the distinction, you will use the word you or your all the time. My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, pass not away, I pray you. Okay? From your servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your, so ganun lang, yourself then. Comfort ye your, okay, hearts, after that you shall pass on, for therefore are you come to your servant. So ganun na, mixed na. Hindi mo na makita po yun ang kung sinong kausap, ano na subject po mga kapatid. So this is the account when the Lord appeared to Abram along with two angels. Okay? Abram sees the three men and runs up to them and bows himself to and honors us, Lord. Okay? And with, with thy and thee, but addresses all three with ye and your. So he honored them as one, but they addressed them as, as plural. Because marami sila. Pero without the King James Bible, you will not see that again. You will not appreciate that. The difference of that po mga kapatid. Exodus 4 verse 15. The Bible says, Thou shalt speak. Okay? And I will be thy mouth. This was 
Jesus Christ, uh, this was God talking to to Moses and of course with his brother Aaron. Sabi niya, I will be with thy mouth and will teach you, plural, what ye shall do. So, bigla na lang, no? Thou, singular, will be thy mouth and I will teach you what ye shall do. So, thou and thy refer to Moses himself. Amen. But you and ye refer to the entire nation of Israel. So just be careful. Ingnan nyo lang po mga kabatid. I will teach you. So he was talking to the nation of Israel what he shall do. Amen. So Exodus chapter 29 verse 42 sabi niya, I will meet you to speak there unto thee. So I will meet you and speak there unto thee. Kung wala po kung sa modern version and modern grammar, parehas lang na you yan. To speak there unto you. I will meet you and to speak there unto you. Pero po, of course, magkaiba. The you is referring to the children of Israel and is explained in the following verses, but the D refers to Moses who had the holy privilege of hearing the words of God directly. Of course, in Leviticus chapter number 1, verse number 1. Makita po natin po mga kapatid. So marami po ito, no? marami po mga kapatid. Ito, few examples lang ng gusto ko makita po ninyo. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 23, And what nation in the earth is like thy people, singular, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself, and to make him a name, and to do for you great things, plural, to do for you great things, and terrible, and for thy singular land, before thy people, which thou singular redeemest to thee from Egypt. So, nako, may isa lang nakaplural po dito po mga kapatid. So, paano yan? This is David, mga kapatid, prayed to God in the second person, okay, singular, but referred to the people of Israel as you. Amen. So, what confusion could result If this important distinction were done away, it could be incorrectly thought that David was praying in part to the nation or that the land belonged to the people and not to God. So this referring here, ito po, for thy land is talking to God about thy people that's talking about God, which thou redeemest, talking about God, that, that redeemest to thee, that talks about God from Egypt. Now, remove that you. I remove the distinction and apply the you. You will misconstrue that itong you na ito ay pertaining lahat sa Israel at mamiss po, mga kabatid, ang mga bagay na ito. Magkarambol-rambol na. Hindi mo ma-explain ng maayos. Imagine, and what one nation in the earth is like Thy people, talking about God, even is like Israel whom God went to redeem for a people to himself and to make him a name and to do for you. That's talking to Israel. Great things and terrible. And for thy land. So, you know, yung shift na yun, ako po. It could be incorrectly thought that David was praying in part to the nation or that the land belong to the people and not to God. So yun po ang, ang danger. Napakalaki ang danger po mga kapatid. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 8, siguro few na lang po mga kapatid, hindi na siguro tayo makapunta sa next principle. And in 1 Corinthians 8 verse 9 to 12, the Bible says, But take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours Plural, become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see thee, singular, which thou hast knowledge, sit at meat in the idol's temple, and shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols, and through thy knowledge, singular, shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. But when ye, plural, 
sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. Now, you could not just say, lahat yan parehas lang at walang distinction. No, there's a clear distinction. The Lord used plural uh, pronouns here and singular pronouns, but you have to identify them accurately. So the plural forms of you, yours or ye refers to the liberty and sin of all believers in Christ as a whole. Amen. But the singular forms, thee, thy, refers only to those individual believers that find themselves in this particular circumstance. Amen. So, pero mawala po yun kung hindi po natin tingnan po ng maigi or kung wala po tayong King James Bible. And Luke chapter number 5 verse 24, But that ye may know, okay, I say unto thee, take up thy couch and go into thy house. So ye refers to the crowd, but the T words refers only to the man with palsy. Okay? He was taking to take up thy couch and go in thy hands. So it's talking about only to the man in the palsy in the context, but the ye talks about the crowd. And that is very important. Remember this. Marvel not, I said unto thee. Marvel not, I said unto thee. Ye must be born again. You know, the context of John, he was talking to Nicodemus. Tama po ba? He was talking to Nicodemus. And he said, Marvel not, I said unto thee. That's talking to Nicodemus. Sabi da, ye must be born again. Nag-shift. Ye. Amen. Must. Hindi ginamit, Marvel not, I said unto thee. Thou must. But ye. So the shift of pronoun. There's a modern version. Marvel not, I said unto you. You. Malilito ka. Must be born again. But thee, ye must be born again. The message was spoken to the individual Nicodemus, mga kabated, which is the thee, but obviously has a wider application to those who desire to follow Christ. Amen. Which talks about the ye. So, ang, ang need ng new birth, ang need ng new birth, it is not just, mga kabated, for Israel, I for I mean not just for Nicodemus, but also for Israel, po mga kapatid. Amen. And praise God, and for the whole, even including sa atin po mga kapatid, na makikita po natin. So John fourteen verse number nine. Sabi niya kay, this is ang kausap niya dito ay si si Philip. Okay, sabi niya, Have I been so long time with you? John 14. Yet thou hast not known me? Amen. Di ba matagal na ako with you, and yet thou hast not known me? Of course, the you refers, amen, to the crowd and to the disciples that are there. Di ba matagal na akong kasama ninyo? And yet, hindi mo pa ako kilala? Mo pa ako kilala? And the, the you refers to the crowd, but thou is addressed specifically to one man, Philip. Because it was Philip who asked, but he addressed everyone. Di ba matagal na akong kasama ninyo? But hindi pa ako, but hindi mo pa ako kilala. Okay, parang ganun ang pagka sabi po mga kapatid. So anyway, we'll talk about that. Ito pong the principle of repetition sa next part po mga kapatid ng atin pong pag-uusapan. But let me end with this example, last example. May 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 ano po mga kapatid, may may tanong, may tanong kung si Adan daw ay wala do nagbabakasyon nung nagkasala si Eve, nung tinemp si Eve. Ibig sabihin po mga kapatid, hindi hindi po nandun lang. Nandun lang si Adan sa tabi ni Eve. Amen. Tamimi Hindi nagsasalita. Hindi ko alam kung bakit. How do you know that? By reading the natural ano po mga kapatid. By the nat natural ano ng Bible. Now, let me read verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord thy God hath made. 
And he said unto the woman, so ang kausap na serpent unto the woman, Ye hath God said, Ye, plural. Tama? So not thou, but ye, shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We, so including Adam, may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye, so hindi lang ang woman, pero ang inaddress niya, pero kasama si Adan, Ye shall not surely die. For God that know that in the day ye eat, plural, thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Bakit plural ang pagka-address ng serpent kay Eve, na si Eve, kung si Eve lang ang kanyang kausap, dahil nandun din si Adan. Nandun lang sa tabi. Makita natin mamaya. And in verse number 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did it and gave also unto her husband with her. You see that word? With her. And he did it. So, her husband was with her. It was with her. That's why when the serpent was talking to the woman, the serpent addressed the woman in plural because the husband was with her. With her. So, who would tell you that? And you could answer that with precision. And sa ating pong King James Bible. It's a, ano po mga kapatid? It's very important to take note on that. And huwag nating basta-bastahin. At magpapasalamat po tayo. At binigyan po tayo ng perfect Bible. Binigyan po tayo ng Bible na contrary. Hindi po mahirap intindihin. Pero, kung tutuusin, kung i-compare mo sa modern version, mahirap kang mag-identify at mag-intindi as pertaining to the subject or yung kinakausap ng Biblia. Kasi hindi klaro, masyadong general, hindi exact and precise yung pagka-address. Pero sa King James Bible po natin, meron po. And you take note on the text. Huwag natin, huwag natin underestimate ito, lalo na yung mag-grammatical. So, mga kapatid, nag-focus ako sa pronoun kasi uh, that's very important. Of course, marami pa. Kasi we're talking of the speech, part of speech, or the, the textual, or the sentences, and all of that. Marami pang involved po dito. So, we'll see po, mga kapatid, if we could have add more examples and uh, makatulong po sa atin, more of that. But tomorrow, I, next week, we'll be talking on that uh, principle of repetition. We'll be moving to a, a principle of repetition and uh, i-ano po natin, i-discuss po natin because we will try our best na bawat linggo at least we could have we could have at least one principle po mga kapatid ng Bible interpretation. Nasa number 8 na tayo, we'll be moving on sa chapter number 9. So yun po yung beauty ng King James Bible and I don't know how do you take that. I'm just giving you a, a few examples of so many Okay, instances in the Bible. And sana po mga kapatid na it, it adds to your joy. And the lesson becomes the helper to your joy. Uh, para po ma-appreciate ma natin and say, I thank God for my King James Bible. Now, when you read, mga kapatid, do not just bypass, but look closely. When you have your devotion, when you study the Bible, when you hear preaching, do not just bypass the words. But observe those little pronouns, and they will help you a lot. And the Holy Spirit will say, use those same words, those little words, to unlock understanding. Sa atin po mga kapatid, and ah, hindi it is very important to miss mga kapatid. And I I said this very important na dapat ating tignan. So it helped me in my study. It helped me in in exposition sa Bible, and I believe it can help you too, mga kapatid. And I have not updated my lessons. This had been an old one, but I'm planning and praying na ma-improve ko. I have not written 
ito pong improve and edited itong aking King James Bible interpretation na curriculum trying mga kapatid na mai mai ano pa natin mai mai uh, tawag nito mai madagdagan pa natin but i have never also taught that KJBI meron tayong mga estudyante dito sila Cherry Root Par ilang taon na sila dito sa AVPI pero i've never taught the KJB or the King James Bible in in uh, interpretation or the KJBI i've never taught it po mga kapatid as detailed as this okay but thank God we have this online ministry and we can detail these things. Sa mga bagay na ito. And thank you for joining us. So I never thought that we will be this early. But praise God. Oh, time na din pala. Exact lang time natin. And um, yun, I will see you next week dito sa subject na ito. But tomorrow, we'll be talking 